Monday, May the 4th, as we get closer to the end of this. When is the end in sight? Who knows? Who knows? People are getting agitated, frustrated, but there all does seem to be some light at the end of the tunnel. I know we've been saying that for many weeks. The states are now, uh, in many cases, I think over 30 states are starting some form of opening up in some way, in some method. They're cracking the door open, like I like to say. I, uh, it's, it's funny. You can uh, apparently get arrested in New York City if you're not social distancing far enough away, literally thrown to the ground, handcuffed and dragged off to jail. But here in Florida, I can be bored over the weekend, get in my car, drive north, and get a haircut. Yes, if you're watching the stream today, I finally got the the much-needed haircut that millions of Americans are yearning for. As things are opening up, in fact, I've got, even got a musical tribute to the way uh, we're opening up the country. I don't know, I'm in, a, I'm in a music mood today. I got some spiritual music for you because we have something that we want to bless. This is a big day uh, during this pandemic coverage here on Team Gallagher in the relieffactor.com studios. It's a big day back in my kitchen again where I have been now for many weeks. What is it now, Eric? How many weeks? Somebody had got it got to be uh, it's got to be 8 weeks. I think we've been here 2 months. A friend of mine said the other day this has to be the longest play time you've ever been plopped down in one pay place in many years cuz I I do travel a pretty good amount. Uh, and it's true. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's nice to be in one place. It's a little boring, the, the the scenery all getting to be a little bit of the same, but I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. A lot of people don't have the benefit of, uh, of, of, a, of a nice, comfortable place in a place like Florida. And you might not have had the option to get in the car and get go north on 75 and find an old school barber shop and get a good old fashioned haircut. And boy, did it feel good. Man, did it feel good. I mean, it was quick. The barber was very well protected. He had a mask and a face plastic face shield. So he had a double layer of face covering. He had gloves. I had uh, a mask. I wore a mask. I wore gloves. Uh, it wasn't long. It was a little hard to get around the ears. It's not, it, you know, but hey, it was a good haircut. And I found a place to get a car wash. So for me, it was a monumental weekend. I don't know what you did this weekend, but I got a car wash and a haircut. And it, uh, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Um, but listen, there's a, a lot of arguing and there's a lot of polarization. There's a lot of politicization. There's arguing about drugs. There's arguing about how we reopen. There's arguing about mandates to make people wear masks. Over the weekend, Dr. Deborah Burks said protesters who gather without masks and not practicing social distancing are devastatingly worrisome. I had a friend went for a long walk in New York City yesterday, went by a park. I think it was the, the pier that, uh, it, it, I think it's called the Christopher Street Pier area. And it was a grassy area. It was a beautiful sunny day in New York sent a picture, there were hundreds of people in this park lounging around, visiting with one another, all very, in very close proximity to, the, to each other. And I'm thinking, it looked like, and I, you know, hate to, hate to inject any kind of race into this, but a lot of, mostly white people looked like. Nobody was bothering them, but apparently in the same city, on the Lower East Side, there are a couple black guys that got hauled off. Uh, and incidentally, the cop that did it, I think, was black as well. So I'm not, again, I'm not trying to make a racial uh, stand on this, but it was a little interesting to me to see a bunch of uh, looked like uh, preppy, kind of Upper West Side type young white folks all hanging out in a park yesterday afternoon on a beautiful day. No social distancing, no masks. I mean, the picture was pretty, pretty uh, surprising, I guess, because it's New York City. Nobody bothering them. But you got mayors like uh, Lori Lightfoot in uh, Chicago, 
we will get you if there's gatherings, if there's parties, we will cite you. We will. We have the Lori Lightfoot cut. Here's cut one. This is the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. This is one angry woman uh, in, a, in no mood to play, as she said it. She said, we're not playing. Now, I've directed Superintendent Brown to order all police districts to give special attention to these parties. And this is how it's going to be. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Period. There should be nothing unambiguous about that. Don't make us treat you like a criminal. But if you act like a criminal and you violate the law and you refuse to do what is necessary to save lives in the city in the middle of a pandemic, we will take you to jail period. There you go. Don't make us treat you like a criminal because you'll be making us treat you like a criminal if you don't agree with what we say you must conform to. That's Chicago. Mayor Lori Lightfoot. wonder how Chicagoans are feeling about her dictates. And this is, again, one of the many, many contradictions from city to city, from state to state, different parts of the country. It's as it should be, incidentally. President Trump isn't going to wave a magic wand and make the entire country do one thing or another. Um, but when you see the video of these police officers arresting social distancing violators in New York, it kind of it kind of shows you what we're up against. I have enormous respond, uh, respect for law enforcement. But what I... But what I've been seeing in the law enforcement community around the country is jarring. There are some departments, I think in Arizona, they're not going to enforce it. They're saying, you know what, sorry, you're, you're telling us to go out and arrest people because they're five feet apart from each other, not six, or their mask isn't on properly, or they don't have a mask on, maybe they're not wearing gloves. We have the video of the NYPD officer. We'll play that for you in a couple of minutes. If you're on our YouTube channel, and we urge you to go to the Mike Gallagher Show YouTube channel and uh, and check out these video clips as we play them here on your favorite radio station, you can see a um, a pretty dramatic takedown. This was allegedly due to social distancing violations. This is cut number 12. Uh, I think it's just B-roll, and I sure hope we have it bleeped out because there's a lot of bad language in there. But go ahead, Pavs, and let's take a look at what a social distancing arrest looks like. I'll give you a few more seconds to get into the uh, to the YouTube channel or go to mikeonline.com if you're by a computer uh, and and click the watch mic on TV. But this is what we're we're leading. This is where we are right now. When you've got the mayor of Chicago saying we will get you, we will arrest you, we will take you to jail if you're not prop- practicing proper social distancing guidelines. Never mind that we're not even sure how far this thing transmits. Yeah, I mean, we, we're so tired of contradictory information. Masks do work. Don't wear a mask. You don't need to wear a mask. Yes, you better wear a mask. Oh, a mask is a good idea. You're going to have to wear a mask to get on an airplane anymore. All the airlines are going to require a mask. You're going to need a mask if you want to do anything. You may not like it, but you're going to need one. Might as well figure out how to get one. And uh, here's the uh, here was the... Uh, altercation. This was on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I think it was Saturday, if not Friday. It started out in one part of the block when the police were trying to arrest a guy for not properly following social distancing guidelines. And then another guy was taking a video of it, and the police officer, the he was a plainclothes officer, he pointed his taser at the guy, menacingly kind of marched over to him, and then he wound up arresting him and was waving his taser at anybody who could... Uh, who was getting in his way? You can play it, Pav. Let's look at look at the, the B-roll here. You see him in the corner, and there's these officers are dragging this guy. And somebody's just taking a video of it. And again, it all started because the guy was not willing to practice social distancing. Now they throw him to the ground. There's four officers on the one guy. Now, now the one guy is saying, no, no, what are you doing? He's got the video camera. He's got the, the cell phone camera. So one of the officers sees him shooting this on his cell phone camera and 
comes at him. Oh, where'd it go? He cut it off too soon. Because then the other officer, the officer comes at the guy who was taking the uh, video. Do we not have the full version, guys? We have a shorter version? Okay, we got to get the longer version. Because that's, uh, that's, that's where it gets really egregious. And that's why this officer now has been placed on modified duty. They stripped him of his gun and his badge. And he is facing um, possible qu consequences for his actions. Uh, sorry, the video cut off there. But he, he comes over to the guy who's taking the video pointing his taser at him, and then he throws him to the ground and arrests him. He gets another officer to come over. So they're making these kinds of physical arrests, physically, um, you know, pretty violent arrests due to social distancing guidelines. Now, violating social distancing. My question for you is really simple. What do you, when you see these kinds of actions, when you see these police reactions to what's happening, what does that what does that say to you about where we are as a nation? Are you comfortable with that? I mean, I support law enforcement. Do you support the police violently throwing people to the ground, handcuffing them and dragging them off to jail because they haven't socially distanced appropriately enough for that police police officer's approval or for a community's approval? Or for a mayor like Lori Lightfoot in Chicago? Do these images alarm you? Does it feel like a police state to you here in the United States over social distancing? Is this going to get worse? Or are you okay with it? And are you glad the police are responding this way in cities all over America? 1-800-655-MIKE.